Welcome back. In this video, we will learn about S3 websites and cores. Let's first look into S3 website in a brief. You can use an S3 bucket to host a static website and have them accessible via the internet. The website URL pattern using S3 bucket is bucketname.s3 website aws region.amazon aws.com or bucketname.s3 website aws region.amazon aws.com Make sure the bucket is public, otherwise your users will get a 403 forbidden error. Now let's understand cores. Core stands for cross-origin resource sharing. Browsers have implemented many security features to have a safe browsing. For example, requests from the other origin are not allowed unless the other origin allows requests using course headers. For example, if the other origin has set the course header as access control allow origin asterisk, then this will allow any origin and if it's set as HTTP example.com, this means allow requests only from example.com. The question is what is origin in the web context? An origin is a protocol, domain, and port. Imply port is 443 for HTTPS and 80 for HTTP. For example, HTTPS example.com. The same origin examples. Here we have our HTTP example.com slash warehouse slash inventories and http example.com slash crn slash customer lists. The different origin examples here we have are http warehouse.example.com slash inventories and http crm.example.com slash customer lists. By default, browsers allow us to embed most content from other websites, such as images, CSS, and JavaScript. Exceptions are iframes. Browsers also look into any side effects and stop any requests with side effects. This is where cores and same origin policy come into play. Browsers allow same origin policy. On the other hand, if the request is made from the other origin, the browser looks into the course headers to see if the access is allowed. Let's take an example to understand a hypothetical security risk if browsers didn't have course policy. Let's say an online user visits their online bank site the bank may store a cookie on the user's browser so that the user doesn't have to enter his user and password. Suppose that the user visits another website. That website may use the cookie to log into the bank and perform a transfer outside of the user's account by making an Ajax call. As you can see, this is where the browser's course policy comes into play, which by default, this allows any request from the origin that creates a side effect. To instruct the browser to expose server responses to HTTP requests from a certain origin, the web server must respond to the request to the additional HTTP response header, which is access control allow origin as a key and the origin as a name. Alternatively, the web server may expose its responses to all origins by specifying a value of asterisk, for example, access control allow origin, asterisk, which is not considered a safe option. The browser first sends a pre-flight request, which is an option request from web servers that wish to support core's requests must respond to pre-flight requests. In this diagram, the origin, httpexample.com, would like to make a cross-origin http other.com request. The browser first sends a pre-flight request to the server of cross-origin http other.com, asking if the cross-origin request is fulfilled. As you can see in the pre-flight response, other.com allows example.com to make get, put, and delete method calls. Therefore, the example.com origin can access other.com, which is a cross-origin request. We got a basic understanding of cores. Now let's look into cores in the context of websites running on S3. If a client makes a cross-origin request on an S3 bucket, we need to enable the correct cores header. As we discussed above, you can allow for a specific origin or for asterisk means all origins. For example, in this example, the course configuration for an S3 bucket, which has been configured to host a static website, allows cross-origin put, post, and delete requests from the httvexample.com origin.